Hello, my name is Mark Weinhold and I'm a hydrologist and an engineer with the United States Forest Service. And for the topic of road dams, we have, I will say, some special insight because as an agency, we are land managers. Millions of, of hectares of land that we manage along with enough miles of road to go around the earth 15 times. So we are very familiar with the conflict that roads have with streams. And so we have been working for decades to arrive at a method that we call stream simulation that in a nutshell is rebuilding the stream and then putting a lid over it. And that lid could be a bridge, that lid could be a box culvert, it could be any sort of an open bottom structure with a concrete footing, for example. It can even be an enclosed pipe that is countersunk. The important feature of all of those is that it allows for a natural stream bed to go through the structure. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a virtual tour of, of one site near me that, uh, that shows a lot of the features that we think are important for stream simulation and how to build that bed and how to get the right material in there and provide the right width so this stream can essentially act like a stream. It can accommodate floods, the bed can adjust as it needs to, and our transportation system is not at risk from big floods anymore. So I guess I'm going to be interviewing myself and asking very uh, leading questions and I'll consider them and uh, give an answer and uh, see if I can show you something that is of interest and fits with the theme of everything else you've been talking about today. So uh, stand by, I'll move to another location. So some of you are probably thinking, wow, that looks really good, just like a stream. How did you know how wide to build it? Or how big those steps through there should be? Or how big the bed material should be? Well, that's that whole reference reach idea. We don't claim to be the smartest people around, but we're pretty good at copying stuff. And that's exactly what we did. The key features of channels in this environment with big, big bed material and steep gradients is the step pool sequence. And that's just how energy is dissipated. Each one of these steps has its own height and it has a pool depth associated with that height and a pool dimension as well. All things that we can measure and recreate inside our structure. I finally thought of a benefit to being out here in the snow. That is how well it shows the actual width variability in these channels. And a channel at a certain gradient is not one single width. It varies whether you're in a pool or a riffle or over the top of a step. Notice the diversity of the bed material that makes up this channel. Everything from large boulders, transitioning to cobble, large gravel, and eventually in the margins, you'll see a fair amount of sand and fine gravel, which is likely the bulk of the material that moves down this channel in any given year. But the mixture of all these materials is important to bring back into our design structure to make sure that the complexity uh, is formed and the bed is actually sealed. In stream simulation, we pay a lot of attention to width, particularly the width of the structure, but also re-establishing the width at the inlet and outlet of the existing pipe that has likely been modified from an undersized pipe being in there for decades. There's no snow inside of here, but you can see the variability that goes with this channel. 
narrow at the steps, wide at the pools, narrowing up again at the riffles. A lot of hydraulic diversity in here, which adds up to a lot of habitat diversity as well. As a general rule, we like having bank lines in the structure. This provides that diversity along the edges, keeps the stream from adopting one side of the channel, and protects your footing over the long run. All right, now you have to quit imagining that you're a fish and imagine you're a small mammal or an amphibian. Wouldn't you much rather traverse along there and go over the top of this road and risk it and run over? I think I would. Well, I can't think of any more questions that you might want to ask me, so I may just have to wrap it up and be content with looking forward to the day where we get to see each other in person again. All right, have a great day.